In this video I am going to show you how I make a crucible steel sword. I made the first part of this video years ago. The project stopped as the customer withdrew in the middle of the project. I recently looked at the blade and I was curious to its specifications. I filled the crucible with a mixture of steels and add glass as the oxygen sealant. The crucible is placed in the forge. It can generate heat up to 1500 degrees Celsius, maybe more. It has to burn at a maximum heat for about 3 hours to melt the steel and create an even blend. The forge is slowly cooled down in steps of 50 minutes to generate a smooth cooldown of the now molten steel. The crucible still has some heat in it, but the steel is not fluid anymore. It is now placed out of the forge to speed up the cooling a bit. The molten glass is broken and the solid puck is removed. For me this is still some kind of magic.
buck is slowly forged into a billet. The billet is normalized inside the isolating powder. I use Fermaculin. I do this to relax the steel. Now the sword can be forged. A friend of mine once told me that crucible steel can be compared to soft clay with marbles in it. The marbles representing the carbon and the clay the pure steel.
The first grind shows if there are any flaws in the steel. The blade is covered in a flame resistant coating. This coat protects the sword from oxygen in the heat treatment. The sword is normalized, it has to be red hot. The video makes it look much hotter, but the even red or sometimes dark red is the right color. The sword is hardened in a medium speed oil. I can see a bend in the blade. This can quickly be corrected when the blade is still hot. It is extremely flexible at this phase. The wooden beams isolate the further cooldown and keep the blade straight. A hardened blade should look greyish brown. The 
The sword is flame tempered. The temper trades some hardness for toughness. The core can be a bit blue, but the edge has to stay within the light brown color spectrum. The profile of the bevel has to have a little convex in it. The edge has to have some supportive mass so to speak. The sword is very flexible. This has to do with the profile, but also with the crucible steel. In fact, it's one of its qualities. The blade can cut steel with some minor surface smudging. One can imagine what a blade like this would do on the early medieval battlefields. Most swords were not even hardened in those days. When hit very hard, an inferior sword would be badly damaged or even cut in half. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think and if I should rekindle the quest for crucible steel swords. The guard is made from mild steel. I chose a Peterson Type X sword handle, as they fit the blade shape and length. I quote, the upper hilt consists of only one piece, a pommel with almost half circular sides, the cross section is evenly wide and rounded at the corners. It's a fairly simple design, but I wanted this sword to be extremely functional, battle ready as they say.
The guard is hot fitted. People ask me if this does not affect the heat treatment. But the base of the blade has to be as tough as possible. Hardness is not needed here. The heat of the hot fit will temper this part of the blade even more. A lot of parts in the sword smithing process are successful because of experience. It's hard to explain all the small details. It's more of an art than a science. Pommel is machined. I would love to make a medieval forge to film the process of forging swords the medieval way. This blade will be suitable for battle. The guard is pinned on. I hammer in points that pinch the guard to the blade. There is no movement in it at all now.
The pommel is hot peened. I do this before making the handle, as it would burn with this heat. This is one method, there are many, also historically. The blade has a short handle, it fits my hand. There are a lot of handle lengths found ranging from 6 to 12 cm, made to fit the user's hand. The core of the handle is made from wood. A thread is used to isolate the handle. The handle is covered in leather. There are a lot of options for the handle materials. It can be wood, bone, horn or covered in wire. I chose a simple solution to keep the blade down to earth.
The sword weight is 1 kg. Historically they range from 0.8 to 1.8 kg. A lot of found swords are on the light side, but they are heavily corroded. Steel is lost. My guess is, so is weight. I saw one majestic viking sword in a museum with a weight of 1.6 kg. I plan to study it one day and make a replica. I have to convince the museum to give me a viewing.